Good morning, students, and welcome to uh, this video lesson for uh, Thursday, September 19th, 2019. And as you can tell, we're getting this recorded. Uh, Timestamp on the on the bottom there. Um, we will uh, talk about today some more transformation-related language, but we're going to expand and include one more definition and one more uh, extremely important property. One that's going to make um, one that's going to expand into some of the. Uh, expressions and equations work that we'll end up doing a little bit later this semester. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, what we're looking at here on the screen and then we're going to switch over to the digital side and I want to, uh, I'll mention it when I get to that, something about the digital side. But anyway, let's look at this uh, particular measuring segments uh, section. Um, we've got rulers and these rulers, yes, they're not necessarily to scale, but what you're doing is you're measuring the length of these black lines right here. And your job in the first one is to find the length using the nearest one-eighth of a unit. So in the English system, uh, this is a metric, sorry, this is a, a, a standard ruler with inches. Um, these inch lines are divided up into different uh, fractional lengths. So you see how obviously we have whole number inches here. These next longest lines, every one of these lines is one half of an inch. And then the next um, set of lines are each a quarter of an inch apart. So in other words, we have five, five and a half, six. Here we have five, five and a quarter, five and two quarters, which is a half, right? Five and three quarters, and then six. So each of these smaller lines are each one fourth of a unit, which means if we follow the pattern, you would think maybe it's one sixth, but it's actually powers of two. So this one right here, which is half of fourth, that is going to be an eighth of an inch. So every time you go, um, the same distance as one of these smaller lines, it's one eighth of an inch, which means one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, right? So using that to your knowledge, you know that this line right here is at least four inches long and how many eighths of an inch, so you can count that. So you can write that on your paper. Uh, number two here, we've got the finding the length of the segment to the nearest uh, 0 0.1 of a unit. Well, this right here, this is a centimeter ruler. so. Each one of these lines, the smaller lines, is a tenth of a centimeter, and then the longer line here is a half of a centimeter. Uh, also, just for, for the record, uh, each of these lines is actually one millimeter because one millimeter is a tenth of a centimeter. So keep that in mind just for, again, future reference. So once again, how long is this line? It's at least four centimeters long, or four units. It's not specified on here that it's, that it's units, but it's a centimeter ruler. Uh, and then how long is it? Uh, how many lines does it take to get to that one? So that would be your measurement. With number three, your job is to estimate, and you're gonna estimate nearest eighth and nearest point one. Okay, so in other words, if you have this uh, mark here, about how many eighths of an inch is this? Three and how many eighths? <clears throat> and then for here, three and how many tenths? Okay, and maybe you can even use the rulers that are directly, almost directly above you, not quite here. Obviously, this one's not as the same scale, but this one here, can certainly help you create that nearest tenth of a tenth of a unit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and Alt Tab, and I'm going to switch over to the digital curriculum, and we're going to uh, use the digital curriculum to go over the next few segments uh, of your paper. Now, I will understand, or uh, I want you to understand that when you're completing this packet for uh, for work that you have in front of you. What you have is the print version of the curriculum, so you have the right, you know, you have the right concepts, and you're going to get the right concepts, and you're going to be able to learn things about it. But what you're looking at in the video here is for you to understand kind of what you have to do, okay? But I'm going to use the digital curriculum to deliver that to you in this video. So what we have to do here is we have to translate polygon A so it goes to point P prime, and then in the image we need to write the length of each side in grid units next to the side using the draw tool. Okay, so that's not too bad. So what we have to do is we're going to um, do what we did before, which we're going to translate um, this figure, and we're going to translate it to this point. So that's why we add this vector. We use the vector tool to do that. Then we use the translate by vector tool. We select the object, we select the vector, and then we get an image. Now. You may already kind of guess what's going on here, and uh, I want to just kind of show you what is going on between these two, uh, this pre-image and this image. So we have shape A, we have our shape A prime here on point P prime. So you know this length here is two. Pen tool is a little easier with the mouse. One, three, two, four, one, 
one and two. Okay, so this particular shape has these side lengths right here. If you go over to this shape and write the side lengths on this shape, are they going to be the same or different as these side lengths? So hopefully you've answered that question and hopefully you've answered that correctly. Because if I go over here, I see here I've got three, I've got two, I'll just do a couple of them just to show you, and here I've got four. And notice that I still translated the shape over to here. So again, you should kind of look and see, well check this out. These side lengths here are the same as these side lengths here. And I know it seems obvious and it seems you know, understandably easy and like, oh, that's all of that. That's all, that's all you were asking about or asking to do. And yeah, that is what you're asked to do in this case. You're asked to just take this and draw the side lengths over on the translated image, the, the image of this object here. But I also put the points over here so you can see that no matter which side you do over here, you should have the same side length on here as in here. Okay? So that means there's something about translations that's important for this lesson. So let's go ahead and look down now to this next object, which is we're going to do a rotation. And we're going to write the measure of each angle using the interior, in the interior using the draw tool. So again, here we've got this triangle. We're going to use the rotate by point. We're going to select the object. We're going to select the point of rotation, which in this case is R. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So we switch those two options. And we're, here's our translate, here's our rotated, excuse me, shape. Now, I want to point out that when you are rotating on paper, uh, I did leave patty paper by the front board. Please be, please use it sparingly. Please don't go through the, uh, you know, hundreds of sheets of paper. That would be a waste. And I want to make sure that you, uh, you're careful with that. But when you use the patty paper, uh, you're going to want to trace the shape and then put your pencil on the point that you're rotating and then move the paper uh, around to get that to get this shape and then again you would draw where it would be now on here our job is to indicate the angle measures so I noticed that this point right here this angle right here this still appears to be a right angle and it is so that's going to be 90 degrees and sorry that's kind of a weird looking nine but it is what it is it's the pen tool um, this one here looks like this one here looks like it's the smallest, right? So that's gonna be 30. And then by process of elimination, the other angle is gonna be 60 degrees. While we're at it here, what do you notice about all three angle measurements in a triangle? What do they add up to? Something to think and keep in mind for a future lesson. But anyway, 90, 60, and 30. Um, 90, 60, and 30. And you'll notice that these angles do line up with this. And once again, these angles are again the same right so keep in mind and I can show you here if I uh, let's see if I can do this let's see if I can do this uh, three points or two lines one look at that okay I even can put here in the shape and it will put the angles in for me so again kind of something you can you can you can use so 30 here 90 here 60 here nice okay and then let's go ahead and do the same thing we're gonna reflect this pentagon across the line L we're gonna write the side lengths next to the sides, and we're gonna write angle measurements next to the angles. Now I will point out that the, some of these side lengths are not going to be sort of directly measured. We can kind of measure heights and things, but this side length here to here is not, not at two. It's not two, it's longer than two. And we're, we're not gonna get into how to exactly determine what that is, um, but I will point out here that if we do this, and we put this here, um, it tells us the perimeter. It tells us the perimeter, when I gotta move it onto the screen, of course, of this shape, maybe. I have to scroll over here, let's see. Oh, I'll just reset. <laughs> uh, I wanna do that. Come on, oops. All right, 11.89, so we, get, we, we do get a, uh, a perimeter measurement there, and let me just remove that. Okay, so um, anyway, it doesn't give us a sign, it doesn't give us a perimeter, that's good to know. Anyway, uh, we've got here this polygon, and I'm gonna go ahead and reflect this polygon. We're gonna use the reflect by line tool, so we click the polygon, we click the line and it reflects the polygon. Now, we have to write the length of each side ingredients next to the side, and we also have to write angle measurements of the interior. Now, I don't have that angle tool here to kind of show you what it would be, but you know you can kind of take some guesses as to what each uh, angle measurement will be when we get to that. So, you notice here this is three. We'll do the uh, the horizontal and vertical sides, 
this is like two and a half ish, right? Uh, we'll say 2.5, 2.6. It's really like 2.6. Um, I'll put 2.6 on here because what the heck. <clears throat> and then over here, I've got two. And those are on my horizontal and vertical sides. If I go over to this polygon here, what are the lengths that I've got here? Well, this is 2.6 ish. If I said that the other was 2.6, that one's maybe 2.6. This one's three and this one's two. So I've got, again, something going on between the side lengths of this and the side lengths of this. Similarly, how about the angles? Well, this is a right angle because it's a meeting of a horizontal and vertical side, right? So the, the, the angle here is 90 degrees. And then this is the same thing. I'm gonna just put an arrow to this just to save me a little bit of time. And this one's gonna be 150, this one's almost 180, right? But I know it's 150 because I can look over to the original image and see, uh, so that's 150 degrees. Uh, this one happens to be 90 degrees as well. And this one down here is 120 degrees. So we've got ourselves a property that's important between the image and then the transformed, I'm uh, sorry, the pre-image and then the transformed item. Even when I did a rotation, a translation, or a reflection. So something's going on, okay? Now, <clears throat> for this object here, this is something that we're gonna introduce a term to kind of understand what's going on. Now that you've kind of examined those properties, and again, I haven't really talked about like what's, what exactly is going on, I want you to kind of see if you can figure it out. Um, you know, I want you to fill in the blank. When you translate an image, you get a blank shape. When you rotate an image, you get a blank shape. When you reflect an image, you get a blank shape. And that blank is a word. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to guess what it is. Now, with that in mind, let's go ahead and add a definition. Well, our job here is to figure out which of these triangles is a what's called rigid transformation. So we're taking triangle ABC and we're going to move it to another triangle, to one of these two triangles. Which one is considered the rigid transformation? Is it triangle CFG? or is it triangle DEB of, the, of this triangle ABC, okay? So I want you to again kind of think about it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and transform one of these triangles for you. So I'm gonna give you 10 seconds just to kind of think about which one of these two triangles seems to be a rigid transformation of this triangle. And yes, it has to do with the three examples I just did up in the, above you. Don't worry, your internet did not wig out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and transform this green triangle, and I'm gonna do it through a rotation, uh, and then I'm also going to reflect it. So I'm gonna take this particular triangle, and um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna reflect it first, just because, a little sequence of transformations. So I'm gonna draw a, uh, should I reflect it? Do I need to add a line? Um, no, you know what, I'm just gonna do, I'll do it, I'll do it the regular way. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this, I'm gonna rotate it on point C. So here's the shape. Here's this, and I'm gonna do a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. And there's my image there. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna take this image right here and I'm gonna reflect it. And I'm going to use, let's see if, I, let's see if it allows me to do this. Okay, reflect all the lines, so we're gonna use this, and then I'm gonna click this line right here. Let's see if it lets me do it. Okay, it doesn't let me do that. Let's try it this way. Uh, select two points, we're gonna draw a line so we can get that. There we go, that's what I want. And then I'm going to reflect it on that line, okay? So it didn't work that way. I'm sorry, I have to do a rotation, I think. I have to do another rotation. Uh, no, I have to do a reflection. It has to reflect. So why did it not work the way I wanted it to work? Um, hmm, what if I do it? I'm trying to think of how I would reflect that. Um, I would have to, you know what? I would think I would have to reflect it and then translate it, so, okay. It's, it's more work than I thought it was going to be initially when I started doing this, so anyway. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of have you understand that if I, I'm gonna, I am gonna try it again, but I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna reset this. Um, if I were to take this green triangle and transform it using a sequence of transformations, I could easily get this triangle to overlap triangle CFG, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna see if I can do it this time. Let's see, let's cheer on Mr. Copperthite while we do it. Uh, we're going to reflect this shape on this line. 
and then I'm going to have to, uh, it's, what if I do it as a rotation? I guess if I, I don't know. I'm kind of put on the spot here <laughs> with that. So let's see if I can do it. Rotate, let's see if I can rotate this um, at this point. Uh, let's do it 90 degree counterclockwise. And I'm gonna have to do a reflection in there at some point. Nah, it's a little harder than I thought. That's okay, I can translate it. I can translate it this way. Let's see if I can move it by, uh, let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can move this point here to this point here. Let's see if that works. I don't know if that's gonna work, but we'll find out. Translate by vector. Yep, that's gonna do it. And then let's uh, reflect that. Okay, so I can do it. I got it this time. <laughs> so get that, get that, and then I can reflect using this line right here. So this object here, how am I making sense of all this? Yeah, and then there we go. See, now I've got it to finally fully overlap that. So I had to do a rotation, a translation, and a reflection. I had to do all three to get it to look like that. But look, all three of those transformations preserved the size and the shape. So, um, and I've also kind of answered that second question for you. So you can do uh, all three of those in that order, or you, you can do it in any order, really. There is also a question on your screen, uh, on your paper packet as well, that talks about, are you ready for more? And that kind of goes from here. And I, uh, about this shape, and I just want to point out here that it is a square, and squares have equal side lengths on all sides. So just to keep that in mind, that's your hint for that question. Now the last thing is, and since uh, I, I want to also remind you, and I'll kind of say this in Google Classroom as well, this is a lesson summary which you do have on your paper and your packet as well. This is you have the same exact thing that talks about what a rigid transformation is. Read this; it's important. The property itself is extremely uh, important for later lessons that you understand exactly what a rigid transformation is. Okay. Um, also, an, a reminder about corresponding side lengths. It's very important to remember that as far as, far as when you translate, rotate, or reflect an object. And then lastly, these are glossary entries. You may already have corresponding in your glossary, in your vocabulary glossary section of your notebook. If you don't, please add it and also add rigid transformation. Okay, so uh, since you've made it to this point as well, I want to go ahead and give you some general hints for the problem set. This is going to be pretty easy if you follow the lesson. Um, Problem number one asks you if this is a rigid transformation to take P to Q. Um, you should know the answer to that based on the definition of rigid transformation. If not, ask a neighbor. With this one here, is this a rigid transformation? Does shape A, can we take shape A to shape B, and what can we do to do it if it is, right? Um, for problem three, is there a rigid transformation we can take this shape to this shape? Again, knowing the definition of rigid transformation will help you answer that correctly. And the last problem here, this is the first of them, but this is where you uh, are gonna do some transformations with the uh, patty paper. So uh, this is the first one here where you would just take the patty paper, trace this image out right here, and then you can move the patty paper A to A prime and draw what you see. If you, do, if you can do it without the patty paper, of course, go for it. Um, but the patty paper does make it a little easier, especially when you do the rotations and the reflections. Okay, so uh, this packet that you have in front of you, this is due Monday, and um, you're welcome to rewatch this lesson as much as it takes for you to understand the concepts of a rigid transformation, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you on Monday. Have a great one.